On the 12th of March 2021, every single one of JStation's YouTube accounts were permanently banned. Accompanying this would be one final tweet by JStation stating, okay guys, been fun, peace out, officially concluding what had been one of the most controversial careers in YouTube history. However, for a guy like JStation, who was gaining an average of 50 million views a month and had been through numerous deleted accounts beforehand, throwing in the towel after yet another banning seemed totally out of character. So it was hardly surprising to find JStation running a small secret Twitter account with approximately 5,000 followers, on which he recently announced that he's been planning his return back to YouTube. Yo, I'm coming back to YouTube. It's been about time. I'm coming back to YouTube. But things start to get a little strange when we look at his strategy for doing so. Dr. Phil is helping him get back onto YouTube? Why would he even want to come back to YouTube when he's quietly claimed that his life is so interesting since he's been banned? What's this new job that he's been working on the side that's apparently leading him to make $70,000 deals? Is all of this just one big elaborate lie to get back into YouTube's good books? Thankfully, we can make it simple. Because JStation's circumstances can be summarized into one specific word, controversy. This word not only represents his entire persona and YouTube career, but it was also the reasoning behind his elusive disappearance in the first place. Remember those 24 hours in a certain place without getting caught challenges that were popular around five years ago? They were often controversial, but fittingly, this is where JStation began to gain popularity back in 2016. However, during one challenge, JStation was arrested after police discovered him in a mall way after closing time. I got caught, I got arrested. There was canine units there. There was about 12 police cars. Given JStation lived in the smallish Canadian city of Ottawa, and many of the places he had snuck into were local spots, the Ottawa Citizen newspaper would cover the story for its readers, stating the Ottawa star of a YouTube channel that features him allegedly trespassing on various properties overnight has been arrested and charged. Well, Ottawa police are investigating a series of YouTube videos that show people hiding out overnight in various businesses throughout the city. The biggest news channel in my city put me on television saying that the police are going to try to shut me down and this is a serious, serious Thing. The newspaper wasn't joking about getting the police onto J Station either. Only a month later, he would upload a video explaining that he was facing up to $50,000 in trespassing fines after the police watched some of his older videos. Here's the papers. I got five counts of trespassing, guys. Each one of these is a max fine of $10,000. So a total max is $50,000, guys. To make matters worse, police would also contact YouTube, getting his entire channel demonetized for trespassing, with a YouTube spokesperson stating, that the videos must comply with our community guidelines and we have strict policies that prohibit misconduct on YouTube. We have stopped monetization on this channel while we conduct a review of the claims against this user. They called YouTube and had every one of my videos demonetized, 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 demonetized. For obvious reasons, JStation didn't only discontinue the 24 hour challenge videos. I will no longer be doing these 24 hour challenges even though I wish I could, I just can't do it guys, it is not worth it. But he would also create a whole new J Station channel so he could monetize his content. But if this channel gets shut down, which I'm pretty sure it will, I'm gonna need to use that new channel to make videos on, guys. Which would gain over 100,000 subscribers on its very first day. However, despite having 100,000 subscribers on the new channel, his main video type 24 hour challenges were no longer viable for the reasons mentioned previously. But J Station had a plan. What if he morphed the 24 hour challenge into a video type called the 3 AM overnight challenge, where he could simply fake an interesting occurrence during the spookiest hour of the evening and market the video towards children. After nine months of experimenting with these 3am videos, many occupied his popular uploads tab, each with well over 5 million views. However, with impressive view counts came impressive levels of criticism. His audience is a bunch of four-year-olds and he knows it. If you scroll through his channel, it's just a cornucopia of upsetting Content. It should be criminal how bad his videos are. He kind of talks like a like a hype beast Christopher Walken. J Station is once again doing really messed up things to make the internet angry at him. What we're about to watch is a pile of absolute garbage. J Station began to receive backlash for a multitude of different reasons. Fake videos taking advantage of a young audience, stealing a YouTuber's Fortnite gameplay, but most notably leveraging celebrity deaths in order to gain views. Eight days after the passing of XXX Tentacion in 2018, J Station would upload a video titled XXX Tentacion Ouija Board Challenge at 3 a.m. Gone Wrong, in which he would attempt to contact XXX Tentacion from the grave. After placing four mid-roll ads and acting completely void of any negative 
negative emotion about X's passing, JayStation received a 50% dislike ratio and further criticism from other YouTubers. Then there's like four med rolls, at least. Like, what is it? What does this guy think he's doing? Like, I don't understand the mindset of these people. Like, this guy just passed away and you're trying to make it a joke. However, JayStation apparently hadn't learned his lesson. As he would do the same thing with Mac Miller and Etika, the latter leading to 300,000 dislikes in only 24 hours. The fact that he actually liked Mac Miller and listened to his music with this disrespectful video is so crazy to me. Each event was awful for JayStation's reputation. However, for the growth of his channel, the controversy and discussion around his actions was like magic. By late 2018, JayStation was averaging 30 to 60 million views per month, up from 15 million at the start of the year. However, a channel that grows by constantly involving itself in controversy is like pouring petrol on an open bonfire. A little bit at a time makes it a fun game, but if you're not careful and throw the whole can on, you'll blow yourself up completely. And it wouldn't be long before JayStation would throw the whole can on, causing his entire YouTube channel to go up in a blaze of glory, beginning with one not-so-innocent video. If you were subscribed to JayStation in January 2020, it would have been almost impossible to go past this video without raising an eyebrow. Saying goodbye to my girlfriend Alexia, rest in paradise. Alexia, these roses are for you. In the past, JayStation had already shown that he had absolutely no morals when it came to exploiting the dead for views. However, to clickbait the apparent death of his own girlfriend for ad revenue was stooping to an even lower level. Thank you guys so much for all of your support, especially on mine and Alexia's channel, Dream Team. She just wanted to get a million subscribers. We were working so- This was either some next level psychopathic zero empathy type play from your boy JayStation, or it was fake. However, JayStation wedged himself between a rock and a hard place, as either outcome was certainly going to rustle some jimmies. YouTubers such as some ordinary gamers would do most of the heavy lifting by calling the Toronto Police Department to see if anyone by the name of Alexia had died in a recent car crash, which they denied. No, I don't have anything by that name on the system. So, uh, in Toronto, nobody, nobody has been, no, nobody by that name specifically has suffered any form of death, right? No. Others such as Penguin Zero joined the social media pylon, laughing at how his only focus was getting his second channel to 1 million subscribers. And of course, like all loving and good parents, less than 24 hours after their child's death, they want their YouTube channel to pop the f off, baby. Let's get some clout on that YouTube channel. Then, four days after the initial video was posted, JayStation's alive and well girlfriend Alexia, who had apparently died, came forward to confirm that the video was in fact fake. I'm sure a lot of you are really confused as to what's going on right now uh, between me and Jay. However, JayStation had flown too close to the sun. He took it one step too far. Not only did his girlfriend break up with him over the death hoax, which she apparently never wanted to try in the first place, but JayStation would be arrested by the Canadian police a week after the fake death had gone viral. The whole faked girlfriend death thing has led to charges against him. There was a warrant for his arrest. He now has to appear in court about some certain charges. The reason for which being that he had apparently thrown a phone at his girlfriend at some point throughout the drama. To make matters even worse, just as police involvement had led to the demonetization of his first JayStation channel, police involvement led to the demonetization of his second JayStation channel after police contacted YouTube to inform them of the court case. With no way to earn an income from YouTube, JayStation would upload a 13 minute final video simply titled Goodbye, announcing that he planned on taking an indefinite break from YouTube. I need to take a break from YouTube. I just need to, I just need to stop all social media. And it seemed as though JayStation's YouTube career might have been over. However, JayStation was too much of a slimy rat for things to end that easily. Like a dirty phoenix rising from the ashes, two months after his main channel had been demonetized, Jason would come back to the Dream Team channel that he had created with his girlfriend Alexia, stating that they had resolved their differences and he was ready to get back into YouTube. I bought her these matching rings, guys. Check these rings out. These symbolize the promise that I made to Alexia that I would never do what I did to her before ever again, guys. However, unfortunately, a ring wasn't going to keep the relationship together if things were to go sour. And three months after getting back together, Jay Station announced that he had broken up with Alexia once again, leaving his only remaining monetized channel in limbo as it was still partly owned by his girlfriend. But we're not going to be together. I don't know what to do with the channel. I think the channel's done. This channel's done, I think. I don't have my main channel that you guys love. YouTube won't give it back. Help me. I don't know what to do and I'm lost. 
I'm lost in this life, bro. If you hate me or you don't hate me or if you hate what I did before, man, I already learned my lesson. Just let me live, man. I'm a human being. I'm sitting in my car right now. I just broke up with my girlfriend. I don't know what to do, bro. COVID is affecting me. I'm not some cartoon character online. I'm a real human being. In a desperate attempt to continue his YouTube journey, J Station would delete every single video that he'd made with his girlfriend on the Dream Team channel, renaming it to 666, where he'll once again begin to upload scary videos for kids. However, it seemed as though J Station had dug himself into a hole that was far too deep to escape from. As after eight months of uploading to the 666 channel by himself, on the 13th of March 2021, YouTube would simultaneously suspend both his 666 and main J Station channel without any warning. JStation would attempt to revive his channel by tweeting at YouTube, stating that he thought his channel might have been deleted by accident. However, after YouTube confirmed that both of his channels had been intentionally permanently banned from the platform, JStation would slowly come to terms with the end of his YouTube career. Thank you to every one of my fans who supported me through everything that's ever happened. Uh, I really appreciate you so much. Following this, many celebrated the end of what was considered one of the most toxic channels in YouTube's history. Well, I'm JayStation has just been banned from YouTube, and it seems like everyone is happy about this information. No one is really mourning the death of JayStation's channel. Then, over the following weeks, the discussion surrounding his banning would completely dry up, and JayStation's name was forgotten about as he fell into YouTube's graveyard of irrelevant creators. Two months after his banning, JayStation would post on a small Twitter account stating that he'd gotten a new job outside of YouTube, I'm doing this thing called real estate wholesaling. Basically, I'm finding like off-market deals and I'm selling it to flippers or people who want rental properties. Accompanied by posts such as, I miss you guys so much. I'm making way more money than I was before and I want to show you guys how I'm doing it. My life is so interesting now. That's why I'm making a new channel in a couple of days. The saga continues. Man, I'm making even more money than on YouTube. Why am I not on YouTube? My life is about to get sick. So why shouldn't it be on like broadcast to everybody? It's gotta be. I already spent my last five years on YouTube. Why shouldn't I spend the rest of my life on YouTube? J Station would then make another tweet stating, I'm going to vlog the journey to $1 billion of real estate. I'm doing it for free. I don't need YouTube money at this point. I'm just doing it for fun. It's not scary stuff and it's okay with me if some of you don't want to watch my new stuff. It's going to be a crazy journey. Also stating that he might have to use Facebook as he didn't think YouTube would let him keep any channel active due to his past actions. Facebook is going to be my top option, okay? You know why? Because they're going to keep on deleting me on YouTube over and over. I'm just going to keep on putting it, man. I don't care. J Station didn't know whether he should call the new channel Real Estate J or Real Estation. However, it didn't really matter. J Station never made either of these channels, neither on Facebook or on YouTube, possibly because he knew that the channel would be banned shortly after its creation. Am I going to end up terminated if I make a home renovation channel on YouTube? In 10 to 20 years time, am I still not allowed on YouTube? I really am into real estate now and I'd even make the videos for free, but I just enjoy making videos and I would like to renovate houses on YouTube, no controversy in that, at Team YouTube, which was met with a cold hard silence from YouTube's Twitter team. In a bizarre turn of events, approximately one month ago, J Station would post a tweet stating, we better get the highest viewed Dr. Phil episode ever, followed by two other posts stating, just spoke to Dr. Phil. He said he could help me come back to YouTube if I don't make the same kind of videos as I did before. I want to make home renovation videos now. I won't let you down, Dr. Phil. Thank you so much. As well as, I'll let you know what will happen, but guys, I hope you understand I can't make the same content anymore. I really want to make home renovation videos now. I'm just thankful to get the opportunity. Dr. Phil said he'll put me in touch with YouTube execs. Pray for me, guys. The problem is, this is J Station we're talking about here. This could be one big complete and utter lie, as his track record hasn't exactly provided him with a whole lot of credibility. I guess it comes back to a question based on a topic that J Station hasn't been very good at dealing with in the past, morals and ethics. Is it moral to lock a long-time YouTuber out of the platform if all he wants to make is uncontroversial videos about real estate and home renovations? Could unbanning J Station eventually lead him to sneaking back into the video type that got him banned in the first place? How much mercy do we give to someone before we instead decide that justice needs to be dealt permanently? It's hard to believe him with anything, to be honest. After every piece of controversy, he says that he's learned his lesson and changed, but only two months later, he's gone back to repeat the exact same mistakes. Is J Station really reformed after his eight month break? It's ambitious and hopeful to think so. However, his inauthentic persona and tendency for breaking his own promises make such a question almost impossible to answer.